Escorted by American and Dutch bombers, Princess Juliana of the Netherlands flies to inspect Dutch Guiana. The princess is the first member of the royal family to visit the Dutch colony in the New World. Over Netherlands territory in the Caribbean, natives salute the princess with a V for victory. Riding by automobile to Paramaribo, capital of Dutch Guiana, the princess receives an enthusiastic reception. At Government House, she reviews contingents of Dutch and American troops on guard in this area. Units of women's auxiliaries parade for the princess. Market women in native dress furnish a colorful aspect to the popular demonstration. Everywhere Juliana goes, flowers are strewn in her path. It's a quaint custom of the country that the princess who walks upon a native bandana brings luck to herself and to the owner. At Fort Amsterdam, chieftains of the Bush tribes come to pay their respects. Throughout the entire colony, Princess Juliana is inspired by the loyalty shown to the House of Orange. volcano erupting in the middle of the Pacific Ocean is filmed by a marine cameraman on air patrol. The tiny island of Niawafu almost blotted from view as rivers of red-hot lava send huge clouds of smoke billowing skyward. Mariners, unable to find anchorage in the deep waters offshore, call the place Tin Can Island because mail is floated ashore in tin cans. A Polynesian village on the island has been abandoned. Nature's fury providing a spectacle of turbulent grandeur. It's sheep roundup time in the far western state of Washington. Brought in from summer grazing lands, they're moved to new pastures for the winter. The trail takes them across Grand Coulee Dam. Guards, accustomed to wartime restrictions against tourists, agree that the grass is always greener on the other side of the dam. So the herd goes over to find new quarters. A picture of pastoral beauty filmed against one of the engineering wonders of the world. Introducing Canada's Mr. and Mrs. Lerieur. In English, Lerieur means happy, and Papa and Mama have 17 growing reasons for happiness. From Jeannette, 22, to Gilles, just two years old, they all work on Papa's 100-acre farm. They harvest their own wheat and grow their own vegetables. In good weather, the noon meal is served in the fields. Fresh milk from their own cows.
surplus crops are sold to the local market for shipment to the armed forces. They spin and weave their own colorful Catalonia rugs. On wash day, true to French Canadian tradition, the laundry is hung in the front yard, so neighbors will know the household is a cleanly one. Yes, everybody works on the Lerure farm. Right now, little brother probably thinks he's doing more than his share. A United States Navy task force moves against the last major Japanese base in the Solomon Islands, Bougainville, an enemy air and naval station from which men and weapons once were attacking allied positions in the South Pacific. The fleet puts into Empress Augusta Bay. Rear Admiral Wilkinson and Marine General Vandergrift, hero of Guadalcanal, direct the landing operations. Camouflaged Marines and Navy construction battalions prepare to go over the side. Japanese planes bomb and strafe the incoming forces, but Coast Guard and Navy barge crews keep pouring reinforcements ashore. Warships pound enemy positions in the hills beyond the beach. American planes roar to the attack, driving the Japs from the sky. A barrage of enemy fire is hurled against the invasion boats, but still they come in. After wave reaches the beach. Tough, jungle-dressed veterans of Guadalcanal and Tulagi, they establish a beachhead in the face of a Japanese force numbering more than 40,000 troops. positions and pillboxes are silent and shattered. Enemy dead lie in slit trenches that have become their graves. Landings on Bougainville put United Nations forces 260 miles from Rabaul, gateway to Japan's last strategic outpost in the South Pacific.